The intimate curves of a face refined to a soggy gumdrop. Cold black eyes so lifeless, even dead pigeons are jealous. The same basic triangle learning how to draw nose, shared with Animal Crossing and low-tier Muppets. Distilling the legendary personalities we love into eyebrows up or down, all leading to a figurine so generic and uninspired that recognizing your favorite character becomes a game of what were they wearing again? Funko Pops. Most don't need to exist. <sighs> Fuck no Pops. I don't like them. But I don't like that I don't like them. Why don't I like these thoughtless little dead-eyed figures that don't move, modeled after people they don't look like with the illusion of value they don't have? Well, that's not a bad start. It's weird because I like the characters they turn into Pops. I like the people who collect pops, and even the people who make pops seem pretty cool. I was really excited when we got the deal done to produce Image Comics Saga. Yeah. Uh, I have been advocating for that for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan, I've read every issue. They like Saga, I like Saga. Well, Funko's motto is... Our slogan is kind of everyone's a fan of something. But if you dust off the rest of the motto... Wait a minute. So, are they an honest business trying to please as many customers as possible, or a ravenous tentacle monster grasping at every intellectual property in the world, hungrily monetizing each character with a genetic, generic mutation? And Funko just made a pop about the tentacle monster in the analogy in the previous sentence. Part 1. The Look I'll admit, some of them look amazing, but the more I see, the more I realize that the coolest pops don't look like Pops. The further they get from their signature style, the better they look. I've heard the Pop style compared to the Japanese style of chibi, where you cartoonize proportions to have big heads on the little bodies. Super cute! The idea being that instead of spending time drawing complicated bodies and clothing, you can focus on where people actually look. A da face. Pops missed the trade-off and de-emphasizes both. A small generic body that draws focus to a huge generic face. Instead of humongous eyeballs and a mouth big enough to eat your own cheeks like in anime, we get tiny, dull, expressionless eyes and a surreal smoothed over mouth spot like a 90s sci-fi horror game. But look, they've heard the criticism. They added mouths! This is a massive step towards what some might call having a face. For example, Dragon Ball Z, it got no mouths. A show famous for having characters scream for entire episodes while they summon planet-sized energy balls. All have placid, passive faces like they overdosed on Senzu beans, or Vegeta got too much Botox. The body language's intensity is really juxtaposed with a mannequin's inanimate gaze. Disturbing. But look, All Might from the newer generation's My Hero Academia looks amazing and expressive with his wide range of mouthalry. May we please have some more mouths? More oval mouths, please. Another example. Bean from Disenchanted got the royal treatment. Accurate, custom nose, mouth, and signature buck teeth. Now all we need is 15 more seasons for people to care. She still kind of looks like the Witcher's slow cousin, Gleef Glumps. Imagine if they went the other direction and instead of cold dead marbles for eyes, they put hyper-realistic eyes with pupils and shine and detail. Well, actually, a product exists for stickers to put on your pop's eyes. These figures are so ugly, a new market emerged to fix them. Capitalism. Let's look at Funko's high achieving older sibling, Nendoroid. Nendoroid. I need some cream from my Nendoroids. Similar to a pop, except they hit the chibi mark perfectly with big, expressive faces. The figurines are fully posable, have different props and clothing to change, and just put out a vibe that says quality. They're also four to five times more expensive. So, like many consumer choices, do you want a lot of this cheap shit or a little bit of this amazing shit? Look, you know it's me because I have the red thing on that the lady wears. Another issue I have is that they'll take the same figure, add a different prop, and call it a new figure. Yeah, you have Harry Potter. But do you have him with a book, wand, an owl, outdated views on gender? Imagine if you could just buy props separately. But no, an HB superfan needs to have 37 near identical Potter pops. Oh, of course you can just buy one. Can you, though? Without a signature outfit or prop, all pops blend together. To illustrate this point, it's test time. I'm gonna put a bunch on screen right now, see how many you can identify. Press pause, because we're not gonna just like, hold the video, whatever. Look at this generic blanket of white men. What am I watching, late night TV? Here's one, a uh, gray haired suit man. Uh, look, oh, he's holding a card that says Jeopardy. Who is Alex Trebek? 
All right, next I'll take necessary obvious props for 400. Okay, but say we take that Jeopardy card prop away and we put in a banjo. Who's that? That's right, it's Steve Martin Pop. But now say we take that banjo away and we place in a little contract that says inside job. Now who do you think it is? Boop. The windows to the soul blocked out with aluminum foil. If you have a spirit bond with a TV character and your only other merchandise choice is 3D printing their groin, Pops can be great little companions. Again, not trying to talk shit. If you look over to your side and see a couple Funkos, you win, okay? That is the second best way to enjoy Funkos. The first being walking by them. What's weird about this whole thing is that I will start down the road of why I hate these dead-eyed doorstops and right as I'm about to sink my critical fangs into their non-existent necks, I can't bite down. I've watched too many videos of people genuinely loving their hobby of collecting these little rejected clone fetuses. It's not obsessive and seems to be a net positive in their lives. There are also endless videos about why collecting is frustrating, hopeless, and broken. People complain about the company practices, the predatory traders, and the endless hunting. It gets deep and sad. I'm not saying that Funko Pops are sickening addiction, but once you keep buying something and you keep collecting it and you don't really have fun, doing it anymore and it's just you know it's just there to fill that empty void that you have and it's really not feeling anymore it's, it's sad man it's it's sad now i'm not saying fungo's doing that for me but but again do we really need a pop of the morton salt girl actually that one's really cool fuck sterile non-offensive no sharp edges for baby safety there's some shady collectors out there who exploit and swindle and it is awful, but I'm actually more mad at Funko themselves and parent company Akon Investments. I'm looking at you, Akon. Not that Akon. Besides the shitty capitalistic practices that almost all companies fall into automatically, I just don't like the way they operate. I don't respect the endless worthless variations that add nothing but desire, thoughtless designs that are basic, boring, derivative, and feel like slimy cash grabs. Basically, you could fire the entire company, restaff it with people who have never seen Pops, and the new people would figure it out by the end of the day. Nobody would know anything has changed. Funko brags that they can create a new figure in 24 hours. Why are you speed running product design? You have more time. Oh, would you like more time? Would you like some time? You can have it. No. Ah, dang it. Okay. I wonder if that point was meant for shareholders and not for the general public. Fast art is cool because it looks like it took a long time. The speed is a bonus that doesn't add to the final picture unless you know about it. If you're just seeing it later, you go, oh, it's a tiger. It feels like it's less about giving you hot new characters and more about getting you to buy today's character before they make tomorrow's. One Funko Pop a day club, let's do it. 365 Funks a day, you better give me my leap year, Funk. There will one day be a floating garbage island consisting solely of Pops, and those who live there will collect the humans who come in search for the rarest Pop. The Clockwork Orange, Alex DeLarge Orange Pop Vinyl Glow in the Dark Chase. Those are real words? It's pop culture popcorn. It's a big bag but leaves you a starving. The thing about Pops is they're just cheap enough to seem worth it. For the cost of a sandwich, you can have this permanent little friend who warms your heart with its emotionless void. Three versions of Edgar Allan Poe? He'd stab the designer and start collecting Funkos under the floorboards. I love Conan O'Brien, but 20 figures? Him with the body of Superman, him with the body of Spider-Man. If you know anything about Conan, is that he would make fun of you relentlessly for owning even one of these. Arrested Development? I love the show, but the figures are barely recognizable, except for the blue Tobias. J. Jonah Jameson, nice. Jim Henson, Tommy Pickles from Rugrats looks like the Binding of Isaac. Real monsters. Ickis looks amazing. Oblina is even cooler. And then Crumb. Poor shoulder cramping Crumb. Everything looks great, but they doubled down and gave him the classic Funko eyes and it looks so wrong. This is a character defined by his eyes. You didn't have to give him pupils, you could have just done the white eyes like you did with the other solid colors. Look how much better it looks if I do it right now. If you're a fan of the generic comedy of The Big Bang Theory, you can get the generic figures based on that show! Sheldon wearing five different superhero t-shirts with subtle eyebrow variations. If you love X-Files and want Mulder and Scully that looks like they've overdosed on the drugs aliens give us to make probing more comfortable, the booth is out there.
Friends! Generic show, generic figures. And then you have bloody versions of things splattered with blood from blood shows. Metal versions. Glow versions. <laughs> Apparently they just released some in gold in case it became too easy to recognize the character. Now its appearance is a shiny mind maze of reflective services that I need to finger like reading braille. I understand rarity is a huge part of collecting. It's extremely complicated, but what if they had a rule where they couldn't make more than five pops per show or per character even? No slight prop differences, just these are the five best characters from Bubsy, okay? So all you Bubsy fans, you're gonna get your five, you can move on. We're not gonna come back to Bubsy. <laughs> Who am I kidding? We'll always have Bubsy. Would that make it not fun to collect anymore? What if you could just buy them all at any time? Is it only fun if most other people can't have them? I don't get it. Not my brain. Never had the disposable income to think about that kind of stuff. I collected candy wrappers as a kid. There were ants let alone awful stories like the Bob Ross Funko, a man who notoriously did not want his image to be used for this kind of bullshit, and then to take that, not only to make the physical figures, but now they're making NFTs, non-funkable tokens. Jesus funkin' Christ, no, do not, we're not. I'm not gonna have to make another video on Funko NFTs. Do not make me. Look, I'm not against collecting things in general, especially cool rocks or exotic drugs, but, I get sus when the thing to collect is constantly being churned out by a company that profits from having more shit to collect. I feel sorry for people who are buying these as an investment, who obsess to the point of stress and pain about getting rare versions and finishing sets. There's a strange irony about people filling rooms with bookshelves, then loading the shelves with figurines based on characters, based on shows, based on books. Stocking the shelves like some sad worker in a store that never opens. Like one of those sci-fi villains who collects creatures and heroes and planets and little pods. Look, they are art, they're fun to look at and hold, they're affordable, plentiful. And there's the, the rare tales of people making money and friendships off of them. You can compare them with Beanie Babies or Pocket Magic Ball cards or homies. In fact, you should just get homies instead. All right, that's all I got. Yay. Check me out on Twitch, Dando Rando. Thank you for being here. I love you so much. Bye.